Mark Zuckerberg's post brings energy to an argument. An investigation involving a man in flames and the Red River Showdown is more than just football. This is OU Nightly. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg was in Oklahoma yesterday in the midst of a vote to raise taxes on oil and gas production to help fill the $215 million budget gap. House lawmakers could only muster up 71 votes, though, JC. So that's right, Colin. So actually, Zuckerberg was in Duncan, Oklahoma, visiting a wind farm and put out a Facebook post comparing wind and petroleum industries. Zuckerberg's post upset petroleum stakeholders after it seemed to promote wind energy and even warranted a response from Representative Kevin Calvey, who repeated his claim that wind energy has not created jobs in Oklahoma. However, pending the approval of the Public Service Company of Oklahoma's Wind Catcher Project, the largest wind energy endeavor in North America could be found right here in Oklahoma. Now, following his stint in Duncan, Zuckerberg headed north to Oklahoma City to talk with a group of dreamers about the DREAM Act. Zuckerberg wasn't necessarily concerned with the Dreamer's stories, but more so what it was like for Hispanics and Latinos in Oklahoma. The event went longer than planned, but one OU student was in attendance and came away impressed and inspired. We are a very conservative state when you bring in such a big name, such a big tycoon to talk. Zuckerberg was in St. Louis today, issue. meeting with small business owners as part of his last trip of his year of travel. And now, new allegations have Republican leaders saying no more if they're true. Luke Hall has the story in New Center. Luke. That's right, Colin. The Washington Post is reporting that Republican nominee Roy Moore had a sexual encounter with a 14-year-old girl when he was 32. Moore, now 70, has been nominated for senator in the state of Alabama. Three other women also told the Post that Moore pursued them when they were teens. Moore's campaign chair called the allegations the most outlandish attacks on any candidate in the modern political arena. Moore also personally denied the claim strongly, but Republican leaders are saying that if the reports are true, Moore must step aside. And President Trump's former security chief, Keith Schiller, testified today that he rejected a Russian officer offer in 2013 to send five women to Trump's hotel room. Trump was visiting Moscow for the Miss Universe pageant when the offer was reportedly made. Schiller said he initially took the offer as a joke and later told Trump, who also laughed it off. The testimony comes after a dossier was compiled that detailed connections between Trump and Russia. And investigators are saying that Texas church shooter Devin Kelly claimed he bought animals on Craigslist to use them as target practice. The admission came in Facebook messages in 2014 with his former Air Force supervisor, Jessica Edwards. Edwards is also claiming that Kelly had an obsession with mass murders and praised South Carolina church shooter Dylan Roof. After the shooting in 2015, Kelly apparently told Edwards he wished he had the nerve to do it, but all he would be able to do is kill animals. And Colin, on a lighter note, a missing elderly woman was found in a cornfield in North Carolina after police used a drone to search potential areas. Being resourceful. Thank you, Luke. Now, in Oklahoma authorities are investigating the death of a man who was hit by an officer's taser and caught fire. Police responded to a welfare check earlier this week to check on a man who had made comments about suicide. When arriving on the scene, the man was sitting inside a van with a container of gasoline. He exited the vehicle with a lighter in hand and a police officer deployed a taser. The man then caught fire and was burned beyond recognition. Authorities have not released the identity of the man, but are investigating his death and what caused the fire. And a long-time dispute along the Red River is finally settled. Texas landowners living along the Red River reached a settlement with federal officials on Wednesday. They said that the Texas border officially lies at the flow of the river. Now, this helped landowners fight against the Bureau of Land Management's argument, which claimed that the new dry land where the river once was belonged to the government. JC, I tell you, I wake up this morning and it's 33 degrees, so I put on a big jacket exactly. and jeans, and then it's 60 degrees later in the day. Right, exactly. It was winter, and now it's fall. <laughs> Jordan, Finally. are we going to get any consistency? 
Uh, temperatures are going to continue to go up and down as we go throughout the weekend and then into next week. But right now, though, conditions across most of the region are not seeing hardly anything. A few scattered showers off in the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles and a few high cirrus clouds out there, but that's about it. As far as temperatures go, though, 59 degrees in Norman, 58 degrees in Tulsa, some cooler off to the north. I'll be talking about where that cooler air is going to be going. Is it coming in our direction or is it going to stay to the north? And then we'll be talking about that coming up. The temperatures across the state right now in the 50s and 60s, top at around 60, 61 degrees here in Norman today. So I'll be talking about that, a weekend forecast, a game day forecast, and much more coming up. Back to you guys. Well, thank you, Jordan. Now, bullying used to stop when the school bell rang, but the rise of social media has made it an after-school activity that no kid wants to be a part of. OU Nightly's Will Cornelius has more on the online trend affecting teens across the nation. I get called faggot, uh, gay, cherry bomb, cherry popper, uh, uh, Elmo. Zach Hargis is a freshman here at OU and says he's experienced cyberbullying for years. It uh, really started to happen around seventh grade. Uh, kids started getting phones and stuff like that. Social media started really exploding and um, I'd get really bad texts. The bullying got so bad, Hargis simply wanted out. I actually ended up switching high schools uh, my sophomore year. Uh, I just couldn't really handle it anymore. I just wanted to get new atmosphere and just wanted to get away from those kids that I'd grown up with that I just didn't really click with. In a recent study done by Florida Atlantic University, 34% of students ages 12 to 17 reported being cyberbullied in their lifetime. Justin Potts of Kite AI hopes to put an end to this trend. Our mission is to really eliminate um, harassment and cyberbullying from the internet. Potts believes more people should be talking about the harm cyberbullying does. It's obvious that this conversation isn't happening everywhere. Um, it's important that we start this conversation again um, and really give voice to those who um, wouldn't be able to have it otherwise. The software is programmed to detect abusive language and is learning every day. So we use machine learning, um, which is basically like training a kid um, to learn something. So uh, figuratively, we hold up flashcards to it and say, this is abusive, this is not abusive. Although their program is not yet widely used, the team at Kite AI is committed in their fight to end cyberbullying. Will Cornelius, OU Nightly. If you or someone you know is experiencing cyberbullying, go to stopbullying.gov for help and resources. Still ahead on OU Nightly, Obamacare enrollment explodes in a matter of days. And an Oklahoma college is looking to send their students elsewhere. Stay with us. Welcome back. A Senate committee narrowly voted President Donald Trump's nominee to serve as the next NASA chief. Republican Representative Jim Bridenstine won by just one vote. He is serving his third term representing a district in northeast Oklahoma, but has been criticized for comments he made in the past. He's made dismissive comments on global warming and has criticized Democratic lawmakers and fellow Republicans. He has promised to run the space agency on an agenda driven by science. And now for the continuing saga of budget cuts at the Oklahoma State Department of Health, Will Cornelius joins us with more in Health Beat. Will. That's right, Colin. Oklahoma State Department of Health Interim Commissioner Preston Dorflinger held a news conference Monday outlining the financial future of the agency. He says the department is in the financial state it is because of overexpenditures by the department dating back to 2011. Accountants borrowed money from one account to the other to hide the unbalanced budget over the years. Dorflinger will ask the legislature for $30 million, allowing the OSDH to meet payroll obligations and stop the growing deficit. More than 600,000 people signed up for Obamacare in the first four days of open enrollment, far outpacing last year's opening weekend numbers. 2016 was a record year for Obamacare signups, with more than 11.3 million people registering. The numbers come as a surprise after cuts in advertising and support for the program by the Trump administration. Republicans tried to repeal and replace Obamacare multiple times this past year with no success. And flu season continues in Oklahoma with seven new flu-related hospitalizations this week alone. This brings the total number to 50 statewide. 
And Notre Dame University says it will continue to provide birth control for its faculty and students. This comes after students and employees protested last month's decision to end coverage for religious reasons. Notre Dame President John Jenkins says the school didn't want to block access to contraceptives. It just didn't want to be forced to provide them. And Colin and JC, the American Society of Clinical Oncology actually uh, released a report this last week saying that even a slight drinking can greatly increase your uh, risk to get cancer. So, Colin, I'm really going to need you to lay off those Cuba Libres. Are you man. serious? I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to go drown my sorrows away with water. Like, with water. And, and duck fries. <laughs> Hydration is key. The duck fries. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. a lot of college students are going to have to keep it uh, on the safe side now. <laughs> you know, it's probably Stay hydrated, for them. kids. Exactly. Well, thank you, Will. Now, St. Gregory's University in Shawnee has announced it will suspend operations after this current semester. The university announced this decision due to the lack of funding after not receiving the U.S. Agriculture Department loan. Established in 1875, St. Gregory is Oklahoma's only Catholic university. They have over 700 students and are currently working with other universities to help with the transferring process. One thing we will do with five or six schools is engage in a teach-out agreement. Uh, and so that teach-out agreement um, will allow students to finish up someplace else but under our catalog so they don't have to spend extra money taking other classes that meet the other school's requirement. Um, the Higher Learning Commission has to approve that and so we're, we're in the process of working that out with a few schools. Some of the schools the university is currently working with are Oklahoma Baptist University, the University of Oklahoma, University of Mary in North Dakota, and Benedictine College in Kansas, and more. Still head on Only Nightly. It's been cloudy these past couple days, but now it's sunny skies. Jordan, will it stick around? That's right, but we see sunny skies or cloudy skies for the game. I'll have the forecast after this. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Drew Novich and look at your weather. So we have a live look outside right now. We can see the clouds are in the area, 57 degrees with most of the sunny skies, just a few high cirrus clouds across most of the area this afternoon. That's the case for a lot of Oklahoma and also parts of Texas and Kansas. Weak cool fronts moving off to our south. Not much really going on today. But let's talk about winter. What are we looking at potentially for winter? Well, just out today, we are now going into a La Nina. Now, what is a La Nina? We have a weak one right now, which means that we have cooler than average sea surface temperatures. This is the temperature of the water. The temperature of the water is cooler than normal, which means that we go into a weak La Nina pattern. Now, what does that mean for the weather and different other things? Well, what happens is across the United States and to the northwest of the United States, we get what we call a blocking high pressure system. And this is way up there. This is you know, probably five kilometers up inside the atmosphere. So way, really high up there. We have this high pressure system which moves our jet stream to the north. And when the jet stream gets moved to the north, as you can see, it kind of comes all the way across the United States, comes right across north of Oklahoma, and off to the northeast. So the impact from that, and what do we see inside the U.S.? So this is for December, January, and February. So the possible impacts we could see is warmer and drier weather for southwestern Oklahoma, wetter weather for parts of central and also northeastern United States, cooler weather for the northwestern United States, Norman itself, we're right in the warmer and drier zone, but northeast Oklahoma is actually in the wetter zone. So that's what we could see for December, January, and February. That's what it's looking like for that. All right, so game day forecast coming up here on Saturday. Low 50s, chilly conditions for the TCU games. So make sure you bring your jacket. South, southwest winds around 5 to 10 miles an hour. For lows tonight inside the 30s, 37 degrees in Oklahoma City. Up and down freezing, 32 degrees in Enid. Tomorrow's going to be another day kind of like today with just a few clouds. Once we get towards the afternoon and then around 5 o'clock, topping off around 60 degrees for the afternoon. Most of 60s across most of the area with a few 50s in western Oklahoma. And then our seven-day forecast, here we go. Cold start for tomorrow morning, 38 degrees with a few clouds. Now Saturday in the morning, could see some drizzle. Could see some drizzle in the morning. We'll start to see some breaks in the clouds, but it's going to be another day like what we saw earlier this week where it's very cloudy out there. And drizzle in the morning, a few breaks, and then that's about it. And then as we extend the forecast out, here we go. In the 60s, only up to 68 degrees by Tuesday, but then another cold front comes through on Wednesday, giving us a chance for a few thunderstorms. It's like I think we're definitely in a weird position with dry below us and wet above us for the winter. It's like who knows what we're going to experience. I just really like those 60 degrees, but I also like the La Nina today. Mm -hmm. Can you say that one more time? La Nina. La Nina. La Nina. <laughs> Getting fancy today. I like it, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. Charlotte, the excitement for this weekend's game is steadily building, and I just can't wait for it. 
Well, Colin, you are certainly not alone. Sooner fans near and far are ready for a Horn Frog Showdown. And what does Trey Young, Christian James, and Kandine Latin have in common? Well, you'll have to stick around to find out. Sports is straight ahead. Welcome back. This weekend, the fifth-ranked Sooners take on the eighth-ranked TCU Horned Frogs in a matchup Big 12 college football fans have been waiting for. This game will set one of these teams up for a running in the playoffs and puts them ahead of the Big 12 pack, earning them a spot in the championship game. While the losers still won't have a chance at that number two slot, they'll be one step behind for playoff pickings. One thing is for certain, this game is going to be a tough physical game, especially for the OU offense. It's going to be a big challenge in the trenches this week. It's going to be, a, you know, the most physical team's going to win. And so for us, it's it's about establishing the run game and then me getting the ball out of my hands because you know they they're a team that they can get pressure on you without having to blitz too many guys just because of the you know the talent they have up front and with linebackers as well. But uh, it's about me doing my job at a high level and putting our team in the best position to win. And what does Trey Young, Christian James, and Kadeen Latin have in common? That would be a fresh preseason win. The woes of seasons past have left the Sooners, and last night they showed it, giving East Central a 114-78 upset. The hashtag we too deep just might be rubbing off on our basketball boys. This year, Coach Kruger has a great problem, choosing who should start on the star-studded team. But I wouldn't be surprised uh, that we have several different starting lineups, you know, different guys playing you know, well and with confidence at different times. Uh, uh, the competition in practice has been very healthy, and I think they've really pushed each other in, in, a, in a good way to, to, to make each other better. So, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know nine, ten, you know, pretty comfortably, and uh, and uh, see where it goes from there. Well, after a rough start to the season, Sooner Volleyball seems to be finding their stride. The ladies brought the heat against Texas Tech last night and got in and out in four sets to take the win. Alyssa Inneking matched her career high of 26 kills during the game and raised that with 15 digs to come up to 15 double-doubles on the season. And the OKC Thunder better turn up their feet if they want to beat the Denver Nuggets tonight. Last year, the, th the Thunder knocked the Nuggets out of the playoffs, and you can bet Denver is craving some revenge, and they might just have a chance at getting it. Thunder is 0-5 and, and needs to find consistency in order to avoid an upset. And it's the clash of the, cl the Titans tonight for the Thursday night matchup. Feathers will be flying as the Seattle Seahawks and Arizona Cardinals take the turf during prime time. If the Cardinals aren't careful, Seattle's offense may fly away with this win. Arizona is going to have to disrupt their rhythm and slow them down in order to not relieve their last meeting. And Timberwolves newest member Jimmy Butler had a bit of a wild ride adapting to Minnesota life. Two life jackets, the inability to swim, and the fear of shark-ridden lakes gave life to this gym. Whatever, bro. Uh. Well, guys, it's safe to say wildlife is not for everyone. Doesn't he know you can rock the boat, but you can't tip it over? I don't think he's heard that before. Like, I don't know if he's going to make it <laughs> after that one. Uh, well, thank you, Shiloh. Still to come on OU Nightly, the dog days aren't so bad for this pup. So stay with us. I'm Cheyenne Plummer at the Update Desk. Facebook is possibly headed to a city near you. Announced today is Community Boost. Facebook is investing tens of millions of dollars to travel to 30 cities and teach digital job skills to the unemployed. The program is set to teach not only digital media, but coding and tech training. That's it for now. JC? I hope they're coming to OKC soon, right? Well, everyone meet the pup who gets a seat at the table. And this is Tink, the Labrador Retriever who has megasophagus, which means that it's hard for her to digest food. So her family built a high chair helping to keep her upright. Now after her meal, she gets burped, 
and ends it with a throat massage. I don't know what I have to do to get service like that, but if you think I'm going to show up at a restaurant in a dog costume, I'll definitely do it. Exactly. You think they tip, right? Oh, yeah. Does she have to tip? Because, I mean, I feel like I should get that kind of treatment. But what I definitely need is the weather fact of the day. Jordan, what do you have? Yeah, let's talk about it. So, again, back in 1911, interestingly enough, Norman dropped 70 degrees in about 12 hours. So we had an afternoon high around 84 degrees, and then we had a cold front come through, a very strong cold front, drop the morning low to 14 degrees the next morning. Mm. What a crazy costume hours. change that would be. <laughs> Just like what we're off. seeing right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Opposite. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you all for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication here on OU's campus. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.